please welcome the groin kicker himself, Peter Coffin. Pete, how you doing? I am good, Steve. By the way, I got to show you this. Step over here. Did you notice how Peter was walking out? I got this is the look of a guy that's fitting to kick yourself in the nuts. That's exactly what it is, Steve. I'm telling you, man. Let me get on this side. <laughs> the man that you just saw kick himself in the balls on national television, which ended up winning him third place in the category for Craziest Person in America in 2004, is Peter Coffin. Nowadays, he's an internet personality with 250,000 subscribers on his YouTube channel and around 30,000 on his Twitter. While in recent years, he's been mostly focused on making video essays and running a podcast that talks about current events and politics, he started off his channel in 2006 making sketch content and doing voice acting, most notably for the <laughs> Annoying Orange YouTube channel. You never know when your time's up. <laughs> However, I'm not really here to talk about his politics or whatever else he does, because frankly, I couldn't care less. Instead, I wanted to examine a piece of internet history, that being the controversy in 2011 that caused Peter Coffin to become very popular in a very short amount of time, and uh, not, not in a good way. You've seen the title, It's Peter Coffin's Fake Girlfriend, <laughs> and how he's still lying about this incident to this day, but we're not quite there yet, so let me set the stage by reading some excerpts from the blog post that started it all. Wednesday, March 23rd, 2011. Peter Coffin is a loser. I think today's blog post is going to be interesting. It's all about this guy called Peter Coffin. The blog post then goes on to explain the backstory of why the author and Peter don't get along, and after a explaining the back and forth over a nose job, I blocked that moron. And guess what? Along comes a chick called Kimmy Kobayashi, who also starts insulting me. She is Peter's girlfriend, and she looks like this. She is Japanese. Also, her Twitter had 17k followers, so she's actually pretty popular. So I tweeted some nasty reply to her and blocked her. So annoying, and she's so hot. WTF. And things started getting suspicious. However, viewers immediately picked up on how odd the video was. It was truly more sus than a character from Among Us. First off, he was accused of sexually abusing- Two days later, Kimmy not only locked up her Twitter and stopped tweeting, she deleted her Tumblr too. I started thinking something isn't right, so I went to see Peter's Twitter. Nothing happened, she just needs a break and needs to not be a Twitter comedian. This is hard, but important. Kimmy's Twitter became too much, too fast. We're still together. <laughs> we, will, <laughs> we will be taking a break from Twitter. Keep in mind, the date on both of these tweets is March 17th. Now, after reading some jokes that were on Kimmy's account, the author becomes uh, suspicious because they sounded like jokes that Peter Coffin would make. And so she did a bit more digging and found some photos that Kimmy posted that were uh, odd, to say the least. Cola in Japan. I think it tastes better in America, though. It has the extra taste of freedom. <laughs> the only problem with this image is that she's supposed to be in Japan, and the words behind her are, uh, they're in Korean. Kimmy is made up to be a nubile 18-year-old girl, and she is Japanese living in New York. How come there are Korean words on the pictures, then? And more importantly, where's Peter in all these photos? So I asked on Twitter, does anyone recognize the girl in the photos? Two of my awesome readers helped me check it out, and guess what? She is a Korean Olzang. Her name is Lee Na Young. She is not Japanese, probably not 18, not Kimi Kobayashi, and most definitely not dating Peter Coffin. Her pics were stolen from her website by a complete loser and used as a pawn for his own validation and popularity. In other words, Peter stole her photos and created a fake profile to be his girlfriend. <laughs> now admittedly, in the original post, the hard evidence, the smoking gun that Kimi Kobayashi was Peter's sock public account, uh, just wasn't there. Objectively, the arguments for why they were the same person were pretty flimsy, you know, having the same writing style doesn't automatically mean the same person. So at the moment, Peter's defense that he was catfished is probably equally as plausible because of the absence of anything other than circumstantial evidence. And that's where Peter's video comes in, because while he did try to defend himself in 2011, he failed miserably, but he, he tried. I <laughs> His video on February 7th of 2019 is the most comprehensive statement that he's put out regarding the Kimi Kobayashi debacle. You may also know me from that time I had a fake girlfriend. Oh! In this nearly hour-long video, there are only a couple moments that have any substance at all, 
which may sound surprising until you realize that most of the video is filler. I mean, after the 28 minute mark, he doesn't say anything new or relevant to defend himself or explain the situation, instead opting to go off on multiple irrelevant tangents about why punishment is bad for the video's remaining runtime. And even before this, he takes about 10 minutes to get to the point of the video, meaning that a majority of this video, which is supposedly meant to address the situation, is garbage. He's saying nothing. He goes off on a bunch of random rants about capitalism and other things that have nothing to do with the video's title. <laughs> As I've said many times on this channel, I believe that the only option going forward is cooperation, aimed at fundamentally changing the economic and social systems we live in. Yes, this clip is from the same video where he's supposedly talking about why he didn't make up a sock puppet account to flirt with himself for eight months. I don't think we can or should try to level with fascists intellectually. And this one is too. I'm not even joking. Now, I don't know if it was his intention to stick this defense in between a bunch of nonsense so that the watcher wouldn't have any idea of what just happened by the time the video ended, but it, it sure feels that way, especially in conjunction with the fact that he provided zero counter evidence against the claims that he was basically in an online relationship with himself. Dude, Dude if I ever get accused of like doing some dumb shit or abusing anybody or like misspeaking or making a false claim. I'm just gonna make like a two hour video about like the nature of language. And then I'll try to like couch my apology or my admission of guilt in like three seconds in the video or like non-apology, Jesus. But I'm getting ahead of myself once again. What actually mattered in this video? First off is him doubling down that he was catfished and that Kimi Kobayashi doesn't exist. This lines up with his explanation in 2011. I'm a horse's ass who definitely wasn't with anyone called Kamiko Kobayashi because that person didn't exist. Secondly, is that the author of the original blog, uh, CSU, I think that's how you say her name, uh, was a terrible person who would later go on to become a Trump supporter. Basically a character assassination. And while he does sort of try to play this off as a joke, the result is still the same and he would most definitely, not in a joking manner, use this idea to call into question her credibility years later. CSU got a great deal of attention on the internet for various things, like attacking disabled people for having problems with able-bodied people using disabled people's bathrooms, running a campaign to get immigrants banned from working at a tourist attraction because they're rapists. They're rapists. I guess the problem that I have with this information is that it's not relevant at all. I don't see how her comments on rape have anything to do with her saying that you made up your internet girlfriend. I could understand if she had like a past of making false allegations, but where's the correlation in this case? The third point is that a few pieces of evidence that are often brought up to prove that he was lying are actually not very damning at all. I'd like to quickly comment on some evidence that is commonly presented. This, a person talking in hypothetical terms about dicks, ultimately expressing a preference for whatever is going on with mine, is not a person saying, I have physically had intercourse with the person mentioned, as people assert this is evidence for and about. This, a forum post a day after the initial callout post from a user who had registered the name Peter Coffin on a message board, is not automatically me, Peter Coffin, and it's a bit absurd that I, a person who was outwardly stating that they were in a long distance relationship, would say, she's sitting next to me right now in the midst of a shitstorm revolving around the fact this person didn't exist. And this, a blog that was seemingly defending me called Content Warning for Ableist Slurs Here, rantsandretarticles.blogspot.com, is not me defending myself. It attempted to appear as though I was poorly concealing myself while mounting a flimsy defense. Yes, people did go to that length. The evidence that this blog is me defending myself is that it had my parents' address, where I did not live at the time, and my public-facing phone number in the footer labeled blogger registration information. It seems like it should be obvious that doesn't prove I registered a blog under a different name to defend myself. The footer of a blogspot slash blogger account is not where blogger registration information goes. In fact, Blogger doesn't publish that anywhere, and the owner of a blog would have to intentionally put it into the HTML code of the blog's layout. On this, I will actually agree with Peter because upon reevaluation, this so-called proof isn't very convincing. But that's like the <laughs> that's like the only good point he makes. Overall, this video didn't provide any new evidence to exonerate himself, 
and didn't serve to answer any of the logical questions that one would ask upon finding out about the situation. Despite being in a relationship for 8 months, you never video called your significant other? And why not post DMs between Kimmy and yourself? Maybe the moment you realize that she was a catfish, or even messages of you two flirting back and forth, since you were so willing to do it in public, but we'll get to that later. Regardless, this video was just a whole lot of nothing. So, he did that whole video, and there were just there was no evidence whatsoever to exonerate him. He just was basically saying like, guys, listen, man, it's capitalism. Capitalism catfished him. And that's where it should end. Neither side can prove themselves to be correct, right? Uh, I lied. The video wasn't just a whole lot of nothing. It was actually, it actually ended up persuading me that he was full of shit. Not what was in the video, but what wasn't in the video. Because our main man, Peter Coffin, decided to conveniently leave out a lot of very important information. This person wasn't Kamiko Kobayashi. Now, hopefully no one researching or speaking on this topic is going to dispute this. I think that it's extremely clear that I, Peter Coffin, had a fake girlfriend. I agree, Peter. Hopefully no one would dispute this. Uh, hold on. I'm getting word now that someone actually did dispute this? All the way back in 2011? On March 16th, seven days before the CSU expose, someone was kind enough to clue Peter in with some pretty interesting developments. The pictures that Kimi Kobayashi posts to her Twitter and her Tumblr, as herself, are actually of a Korean woman named Lee Na Young. Very interesting indeed. Still, her slash his tweets are funny as hell. Now her son disappearing from the Twitter and Tumblr makes sense. So uh, what does our friend Peter say in response to this? It is actually a woman, and she <laughs> is actually remarkably similar in appearance to that person. But yes, her leaving does have something to do with this. I would like to ask that you let her be. Now hold on, wait a minute. You're telling me that he basically knew exactly what CSU was going to accuse him of a week before it happened, and his response was to say that they <laughs> looked alike? So that means that by March 17th, when he posted those tweets saying that Kimmy was taking a break from Twitter but that they're still together, he had already been tipped off that this Kimmy Kobayashi person was not who she says she is. I think that it's extremely clear that I, Peter Coffin, had a fake girlfriend. At least, it was extremely clear to everyone but me. Uh, I believe this person was who they said they were and had been believing it for quite a while. Huh, is, is that right? What a fucking liar, dude. What a fucking Weasley little liar, dude. Peter Coffin also likes to say that he doesn't know who Kimmy is. You know, this person is totally anonymous. Despite also saying, on the day that the allegation is dropped, that he had met Kimmy in Scotland, and that he also knew what she looked like. Now, I shouldn't have to tell you that you can't be fucking catfished if you claimed you met up with them in real life. But maybe, <laughs> just maybe, he was referring to a Minecraft server that he allegedly played on, which he would have had to misspell because there's two T's in the name of the, the server, and then on top of that, forget to clarify that he wasn't talking about the actual country. Uh, there's also the fact that he met his now estranged wife in Scotland as well, and Scotland is in the actual country for sure this time. In an attempt to defend himself back in 2011, he took to Reddit to do an AMA, but after the hard-hitting questions started rolling in like, why did you never think to meet your super hot, totally famous girlfriend who lives in New York if you literally lived in Michigan? Uh, after getting these types of questions, he never responded to anything and promptly deleted his account. Although, we were able to get some insight into Peter and Kimmy's relationship from the original post. So he has now confirmed that he Skyped Kimmy, and in an article that reached out to him for a comment, he said that Kimmy sounded like any normal girl, but at the same time he has no idea who she is and is worried that she's a guy. That makes zero sense. And then you'd have to believe that Peter was referring to a Minecraft server when he said that he met Kimmy in Scotland, or that the screenshot is fake, which I feel like he would have mentioned in his video seeing as he had no problem saying that the other pieces of evidence weren't real. The most damning piece of evidence, and there's zero mention of it in the video, where he's supposed to be exonerating himself. He had eight years to make this. There's no way he, that he hasn't seen this, considering that it was included in like every blog around the time. If you're gonna take time to address some evidence but not others, it makes it look like you're hiding something. Maybe it would have been believable that he could have missed it if this video was made back in 2011, but it's <laughs> it was released eight years later. Come on. Are you Kim Kobayashi? No. <laughs> What a stupid question. <laughs> and the truth is, there is something wrong with me, at mm -hmm. least by society standards. Tell us what. I am hurt from this. 
I am still dealing with things that stem from this. At times, the walls close in and I trust no one. At times, I think about what damage I may have done. At times, I blame myself. And at times, I want to watch the world burn. <laughs> So it's not lining up. His story makes no sense. And then there's him sending a fake cease and desist to CSU, which he also just so happens to leave out of his video. From Peter Coffin. Subject, cease and desist letter. Several statements made about Peter Coffin in your blog postings are untrue and defamatory. You have made them maliciously to injure Peter Coffin in his trade, office, and profession. As such, they are defamatory per se. Under Chapter 21, Section 7, Singapore Law, Defamation, this letter constitutes a demand for immediate retraction in writing of these false and libelous statements. And guess what? Chapter 21, Section 7, Singapore Law is the Betting Act. So <laughs> he uh, he cited the wrong thing. Peter Coffin on Twitter, the same day the, of the email and the same day of the specific blog post, said that he tried to quote, stop this privately with CSU. And I guess that means pretending to be your own legal team so you can send out phony cease and desists. Another interesting part of CSU dumping this email onto our blog is the person writing this email, presumably Peter Coffin, saying that, quote, similar statements are repeated throughout the post. And again, we repeat Mr. Coffin cannot confirm the identity of Kimi Kobayashi, but can confirm that he is in no way responsible for such affiliated with Kimi Kobayashi. Documentation exists in the form of emails, chat logs, proving that he has interacted with a Kimi Kobayashi over the period of time alleged as his creation. Okay, so if this documentation exists, why not just post them? But back to the blog. As one last jab, if he is his own girlfriend, obviously he'd be his own legal team too. P.S. Your legal team spelled repetition wrong. Let's not beat around the bush. The thing people hate me for is making up a girlfriend, which isn't something anyone can actually prove. It was extremely clear to everyone but me. Which isn't something anyone can actually prove. Literally lying. Still lying to his audience. This is pretty convoluted and confusing. Thankfully, CSU made a timeline which would have been super helpful for Peter Coffin to consult when he was making his video back in 2019. Now, we go back to about 15 months ago. My bad, not eight months, which is when he admitted on Twitter that they were a power couple in December 2010 when Peter got to know Kimmy. Fast forward one year, three months. On March 16th, something happened. Someone found out Kimmy is fake and notified Peter not only via his private email, but also posted on his blog. And the below is Peter's comment. Kimmy is definitely a woman. Kimmy looks like Lena Young. Kimmy left the internet because she was exposed. March 17th, Kimmy deleted her Twitter and Tumblr. Now Peter claims he's actually still in a relationship with Kimmy, despite finding out Kimmy is using a Korean All Zang's photos. March 24th, after the expose on my blog. Now Peter claims this girl who was in a relationship with him for over a year and is still in a relationship with him, who looks like Lee Na Young, he is suddenly not sure who she is. And he wants her to be real. Why is he brokenhearted when she is real, totally gorgeous to boot? Didn't she just chat with him on the phone, etc? Aren't they still together, braving through this? March 25th, post on Reddit. Peter now has, literally, no idea who made Kimmy up. Wait, I'm really confused now. So we found out this girl, as improbable as this is, was using someone's fake photos then he was sad for like a day while Kimmy deleted evidence, but he saw how she looks and she's pretty like Lena Young. He forgave her and declared they're still an item. Logical question number one. When you find out your girlfriend has been impersonating someone online, you are okay with that? <laughs> you won't find out who she really is before deciding to forgive her? So how could he have no idea who made Kimmy up? Logical question number two. Presumably, since Kimmy has been with Peter for over a year now, she must have developed feelings for him since no one can play a prank for that long. Where is she when he needs her the most for clarifications now? Why isn't she admitting that she created these fake profiles to save her boyfriend from so much embarrassment? But here's what we know. Kimmy is from Scotland, is of an ambiguous gender, and is totally mystical when it comes to whether or not she exists. Some people argue she does, some people argue she doesn't. Other claim video and photographic footage of her existence. Oh my god, guys, I solved it. I found out who Kimmy is. Peter was dating. Wait for it. <laughs> the Loch Ness Monster. And so now I want to I want to read these public displays of affection between Peter and Kimmy. The pieces of fine art that everyone was subjected to. And more. Hey, thought I'd publicly flirt with you. Winky face. Look, you're told by my lawyer you had to stay away from me after the attack. Don't make me call the police. The problem is that the state calls that an attack. I just call it beating you senseless. 
having sex sans consent. I am still having trouble removing parts of the carrot you put inside me. I've had to take time off from prostitution. It was either the carrot or the grapefruit. Be thankful. What I'm really thankful for is that you didn't put your penis inside me. I really do not get why you draw unicorns on it. I didn't put it in you because you painted a gopher over your vagina digging into it. It was just off-putting. First, fuck you, gophers are cute. Secondly, I put in effort to paint something. Your sharpie unicorns equal amateur. I think you win today, both as far as quality of your tweets and general art. Thanks, bitch. Have fun in Loser Alley while I stride along Winners Boulevard. Love you, of course, but you suck cock. It is you who suck cock, fool. Love you too, winky face. <laughs> I don't think I've ever had a stronger sense of secondhand embarrassment than I did reading that. But it's time for me to say something. At Kimi Kobayashi and myself, our Twitter's new power, new power couple. That's Bro. called love, you idiot. At Kimi, the day is mine. That's what I hate. And then here's. Shouldn't you Shut be at Nagasaki up, right? avoiding the Hiroshima bomb? He became so tired he dreamed he had a real girlfriend while he was awake. <laughs> Shouldn't you be at summer camp? Avoid the showers. Japanese have a lot of come with ants. Work, 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 build, build, build. Oh no, a giant lizard is killing us. Jesus Christ. Oh my God, we're just going real hard. And now here's uh, this guy in the comment section of Peter Coffin's uh, YouTube videos. This guy's, you know, ragging on him. And here comes Kimi Kobayashi, the account, okay, saying, What an absolute asshole you are. You must be so miserable if you need to take the time to insult someone like that. If you think a plastic bimbo who wears 10 layers of makeup like Kim Kardashian is ridiculously gorgeous, you're clearly a loser <laughs> who can't find a real woman. <laughs> also, Peter is not lazy. He works very hard on his videos. Maybe get a job, get a girlfriend, move out of your mommy's house, then come back and preach. Yes, me too. I'm also a pretty Asian woman. I can confirm. Peter Coffin is very handsome, very hardworking. You're clearly a loser who can't find a... <laughs> A real woman. Okay, and this next comment. I was just joking, sorry. I am a female. I'm a female, guys. So I'm not sure the insult prick is suitable for me. I'm also Peter's girlfriend. I just find it funny to troll around in his videos. And he finds it funny too. I am hurt from this. I am still dealing with things that stem from this. At times, the walls close in and I trust no one. And when they ask me how I'm doing, I say I'm just fine. And when they ask me how I'm doing, I say I'm just fine. Now, at the end of the day, do I hate Peter Coffin or want him cancelled or whatever? No, obviously not. This is just <laughs> hilarious. Regardless of how old it is, the situation is just funny by itself. And the fact that he feels the need to continue to lie about this to this day is... <laughs> might be even better. I'm a baby. <laughs> but all of this talk about fake girlfriends has, you know what it's made me? It's made me tired. I'll see you in the next video. And at times, I want to watch the world burn. That's what the mask is! That's what the point of the mask is. Our self-worth is not contingent on 